So if we start from the starting point, uh, which is, as we said, Aristotle's non-poetics, in which he defines the structure of drama. And he says, every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. We start from there. So what happens in these three acts? No? Why do we call them? Uh, why, why is there a sequence in these acts? And what do we expect to happen? And what we, as people writing a script, would like to happen, and now to put in these different acts. So, in the, the first, we say the first act is the setup, no? The central um, middle act is the one where the things happen, the denouement, we say, or the complication of things. So, in the first act, they are set up, in the second one, they evolve, and in the third one, they are resolved. So in the first act, you introduce uh, the world of the story and its principal characters. If it's well done, you really don't need words. You don't need to explain where we are, what's happening, what's going on. Uh, with images, you can show everything, uh, what, what's going on. It also presents the primary conflict, we say, around which all the story will be building up. So which is the conflict now between the wants and the needs of the two characters? You're yes. already understanding, really, in the setup, what's going to go on. Now, which are their needs um, and which are their wants? So we're, we're starting to understand where their attention is for both of them. First act, as Christian said yesterday, uh, two sequences. So the first two uh, sequences we said in the, in the uh, setup, first act, uh, then four in the uh, middle act, second act, and two more in the third act. What happens in the second act is that the obstacles grow. Now the obstacles are set up. Now they grow in uh, in intensity and in, in uh, dimensions, and of course the response of the uh, the protagonist to the obstacles becomes more important, no? And what is happening is that the, uh, the character changes. I mean, he, uh, he develops. He develops, he has to take choices. He has to act, no? According to what this strong pressure upon him is, is dictating to his inner self. And this is all happening in the second act. Going back to Joseph Campbell, uh, to uh, yeah, pre pre Vogler, uh, he called this period being in the belly of the beast. Belly of the the beast. belly of the beast. Now there's this big beast, is the monster of life, and you're inside, and you have to find your way out, and and then now see where you are, what's going on. You are in the belly of the beast. You can be totally obscured because you know you can not see what's outside, but it's also a moment for great opportunities. So you can plant new things, you can see new perspectives. No? Big things can happen in this stage of life that open up new possibilities. And, and this has to be uh, deepened in here. Also, the, the subplots we were talking before about. No? Subplots are um, related to secondary characters. Uh, they give more depth to the story. Now, the main storyline is the main character with his wants and needs and the tension. Uh, the subplots may have to do with the main, uh, the main character sideways. He has other things in which he is engaged, not in the same way as he is on his main storyline, but mainly the secondary characters are engaged, each of them, in other stories. And they bring them to the, to the main story. They give, as we say, flesh to the story. Okay, third act uh, tells us what has happened. Now it goes towards the conclusion. And um, as we were saying, the, uh, the stories, the, the plots, the, the storylines of each character and of each, sub, of each subplot find their natural conclusion. Now, so you must be able to close the stories, close the characters' <clears throat> tension in, I said, a satisfactory way for the audience, 
uh, by the end of the third act. Where I repeat, satisfactory does not mean a happy ending. It means something that we can go with uh, satisfied to have had an answer you know, to all these questions that we are uh, posing ourselves during the film. Will our protagonist be able to satisfy his need? Will he find what he wants? Uh, now, will he overcome the obstacle? Will he get together with his girlfriend in the end? Uh, will these two in the film find a way to relate to each other? And uh, so all these questions should find their, uh, their answer in the, in the end. And, and above all, we talk about character arc, development of, of uh, the protagonist. Uh, every secondary character should have their little development, but we, we shouldn't be distracted in the same way as, as the subplots. No? But the film is a particular moment in a person's life in which a lot of powerful things happen to them, and we expect them to be changed by the end of the film. 